Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Yun, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit odd on the dairy farm. We're gonna be chopping or silaging one swath of barley. It's about a mile long, and the reason why we're gonna be chopping it a little bit earlier than the rest of that entire field is because it's right along the road, and Sask Energy, which is the energy company out here in Saskatchewan, natural gas and electricity and that kind of stuff, uh, they, uh, want to drill in a fiber optic line right beside the road and our crop butts right up against the road and it looks like they're going to be trenching a line through our crop and that's going to mean that our crop is going to be driven over we're going to lose that um you know 30 feet wide into our field for a mile long which is a decent little chunk of crop and considering that this year was pretty much a drought out here in saskatchewan and the fields are looking pretty horrible we want to get every single ton that we possibly can get our hands on so we're gonna go out there, we're gonna chop it, make sure that we get it before they go tomorrow and trench in that line or drive our crop to crap. Uh, they have every right to be trenching that line in there. Uh, there's a road allowance from the center of the road, 30 feet each way, and that's basically the government's area or their land for the road and they're allowed to trench whatever they want in there. Uh, so it's kind of our fault for farming right buddy up to the road but obviously you get more acres like that and every year it's pretty fine unless they're gonna you know trench a line in there so that's what we're doing this afternoon i'm in the swather i'm gonna head out there here pretty shortly and start cutting down that single swath right along the road and then we're gonna grab the chopper which is in the shed over there blow it into a truck which you can see behind me we're ready to go here gear it up let's get this going such a wide machine and the windows are curved so it kind of makes everything look a little warped and a lot closer than it actually is so i'm always out here kind of sketched out it's looking like a pretty nice crop it's a little uneven especially along the road here because the road there's a little dip that goes to the ditch and uh that's where it's a lot of moisture along the road so you can see some mistakes in the ditch there dad pulled them all out of the crop here spray painted around them so we can put them back there when we're done here but they were literally like pretty much right there a couple of meters into the crop so that would have been a really big shame to lose all this crop you can see on the edge there how much shorter it is and that makes it really difficult to pick a header height because you got to be kind of in the heads with the reel but then you're not pulling the ends of the header in and it won't cut at all so it's pretty annoying to cut how uneven it is i imagine that's going to be this entire field because it's going to be so patchy the low spots are going to be really heavy and then the regular spots are just going to be kind of pathetic and short well, at least we're getting some here well that's all we're gonna cut it's pretty much a mile long swath right along the road and this barley is nowhere near mature these heads are probably some of the most filled out heads in this field except for all the low spots all the high stuff is not going to be this full you see there's something in the heads this stuff is pretty nice it's obviously not mature yet it should be drier this is going to be super moist stuff we're just going to put it in the pit we're probably going to end up feeding it to the corrals Grab the chopper, heading out to the field. There we go, nicely lined up. Just waiting for the truck now. Dad's already on the road. The farm's right there, the big patch of trees. You can see him on the highway. Drop the pickup down. And see if she's good to go. Looking pretty good.
Oh, there goes the first load. So some of the crop that was right up to the road there was pretty much up to my waist, maybe even a little bit higher. But most of this field is gonna be around knee height. Still some decent tonnage here. Oh, come on guys. You gotta love it when people litter. When you start to get to some of these lower patches, it's pushing knee height. See if we can find a really high spot somewhere, it'd be nice. So this is some better looking stuff. It's up to my waist pretty much. I don't know, it's a dry year. We had two shots of rain at about an inch, which is surprisingly more than what other people have gotten out here. And we're really lucky to even have this crop here. Head seemed to be filling out pretty good on the barley. There's something in there. That's all your energy, so. The plant is obviously forage, cows need that, but this is your energy, that's gonna create a lot of milk. And if you have really good heads in the barley and the grain's really filled out, you can feed less gr actual grain and that'll save you a ton of cost. So depending on how good your forage is, you're gonna end up spending more or less on your grains to put in the cow's TMR. Already getting the chopper dirty after one load. It's great. stakes that were put in the ground it looks like they came back and taped some taller stakes on there because they put these in pretty early this year and the crop must have overtaken them so before we took those stakes out of the ground here we spray painted some pink paint on the ground around those stakes so as soon as we're done here this afternoon we'll put the stakes right back where they were so we don't mess with what they're doing so yeah basically a road allowance from the center of that road typically 30 feet from that center is what is technically the roads property or the government's property and then our field starts from then on but obviously there's nothing here so you always farm right up to the road and maximize the field We got a total of two and a half trucks. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm gonna head back to the farm and we're probably gonna pack it. We're not gonna cover the silage, just uh, feed it right away to the krells. Shouldn't uh, matter too much. Just we're, we're not gonna feed 100% the silage. We're gonna mix it off with some good stuff, obviously, that's been in the silage pit for over a year. It's fermented properly. But this is fresh feed. Cal's gonna like the taste of this stuff, I think. Pretty cool. Right on, we got our two and a half loads there at the back of the pit. Doesn't really make a dent in this bunker. Some good looking stuff. Silage always smells the best. We've gone back and forth and every which way on this pile like five times so it's packed pretty good 
You can see the ruts of the tractor are not deep at all and that means it's really solid. The reason why you want to pack a silage pit really good is because you want to squeeze all of the air along with all the oxygen out of the pile. There's a lot of oxygen in the pile, it's not going to ferment so good. Yeah, we're not covering this with plastic, but it's still going to probably ferment down deeper a little bit and we want to make sure it's still going to be good. We might end up throwing some of this away, it might rot, but at least this way we did get something off of that field where they're going to trench that line in and it wasn't a complete loss. So even if we do end up, for example, spreading this across the field with a manure spreader, half of it or something, it's still, you know, at least we got something out of it instead of nothing. So just to end the day here, I got some pretty exciting news for our farm. Uh, we're gonna be expanding this pack barn behind me here. So this is the straw pack barn. It's got the center drive through and then the two packs on each side. And in the front of this barn all the way is the parlor. And that barn right there is the main freestall barn. So you guys can see the freestall barn from behind here is a lot longer than the straw pack barn. And this summer, we're gonna be building that one all the way out to be completely flush with the freestall barn, which is gonna be awesome. It's gonna give us a ton more straw pack room in that barn, which we have some pretty big plans for. Uh, we're gonna be keeping a fresh group on the one straw pack with the special needs pen. Right now it's just special needs cows. And if we have a fresh cow, we put them there for a day or two maybe, and then we have to put them back in the pack barn or the freestall barn because there's just not enough room on that pack. We gotta kick them out really quick, but we would like to keep them in a separate group for two weeks maybe, three weeks if we can, uh, just to kind of get the cows started off after they calve, give them a little bit more time to adjust to the ration and to have less stress on the cows. There won't be any head lockers in there, less resistance to get food. There'll be less competition in that group because it'll be less crowded. There'll be less animals in there and hopefully they just take off. A lot of dairy farms have a fresh group. We just don't have the room for it right now. And that's part of the reason why we're expanding this pack barn. Another reason we want more straw pack for our close-up cows. So the cows that are about to calf, we always put them in this straw pack three weeks before they're about to calf. And that's getting pretty crowded in there. Pretty much from the get-go, it was really crowded. And we didn't really have enough room in that straw pack for all the close-up cows, especially through the winter months when we got like 30 cows in straw pack and it's really only meant for 15. So we're gonna be expanding these packs to give basically the cows a lot more room and a lot more comfort in their most important time during their lactation. So that transition period between calving and then you know being calved and getting on the milk is so important for cows and their entire lactation and that can really have a huge impact on how much milk they're going to produce over the 305 day lactation and that's why we're going to be expanding this pack barn. I think we're going to see some pretty cool results with this and uh, it's going to be an awesome project for the summer. We can watch it progress and see how the construction goes. Another thing we're going to be keeping individual groups for the close-ups. I guess we'll jump in this barn and then I can explain it a little bit better to you guys. So yeah, special needs pack and the close-up straw pack. So this will pretty much be one group, probably from the water bowl there. And then we'll have another group and then another one after that. And we're gonna keep them separate. And every week when we bring close-up cows in, we'll bring some into group one, the next week we'll bring them into group two, and the next week we'll bring them into the third group. And the reason why we don't wanna mix up cows so much is that they don't have to re-establish the pecking order in the group every time we add cows every week. So cows are really sensitive to the pecking order. Every time you introduce new cows to a group, they want to figure out who's the boss and they are going to be fighting and they're going to basically waste a bunch of time when they should be calm, eating food. And doing this, the three groups, is going to relieve a lot of stress from the cows and it should help them out a lot when they're about to calve. So that's the idea. So we're at the back of the main cow barn now, the freestall barn, and this is where the slot is. The other really cool thing about this pack barn expansion is that this slot is gonna be pulled out. The barns will attach right here through this tie-in, and that slot is gonna come all the way to the back of the two alleys in that pack barn, and it's gonna tie in as one long slot so that we can scrape those alleys into this manure system back here right away. That's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be getting rid of that ugly pile of manure right there, and it's just gonna be a lot more convenient. 
So this pack barn expansion is gonna do a lot for us. We're really excited. It's always fun seeing construction happen. It's a pretty big hassle. You know, they're gonna be building here. We're gonna to need to feed in that center drive through alley, put bedding in, clean the alleys out still, but it's gonna be worth the hassle once we see that end product and start to work in there. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.